week three, Advent, and we find ourselves still waiting. This week, we'll light the third of the Advent candles, the candle of joy. We'll also unwrap Christmas. Jesus was born to be the Prince of Peace. As I'm here in the sanctuary and you in your place at home, many things still go on. As I stand here up above on the roof of the historic sanctuary at Rome First, roofers are busy putting a brand new roof on this building. The storms of uh, several weeks ago required that we have a complete roof inspection and a roof replacement. We're thankful for insurance that has covered the majority of the cost. But the sounds that are going on are anything but peaceful. But they are a sound of progress and the promise of God. What does that mean? Well, in this week's time of worship together, we'll unwrap the promise of Christmas and explore what it means that Jesus was born to be the Prince of Peace. And we'll wait as we light the third candle, the candle of joy. Let's worship together as we discover the beauty and the wonder and the joy of Christmas. Let's worship. Hello, and welcome to Rome First United Methodist Church online worship service series. We're so glad that you're here with us today. After the service, please visit our website at www.romefirst.org. That is Rome, F-I-R-S-T dot O-R-G. There you can find remote fellowship links to worship services, to Sunday school, and to Bible studies. You can also contact our staff by using the drop-down menu, selecting their names, and noting their email address there on the website. If needed, you can certainly call the office during normal business hours at 706-291-8590, and someone will be glad to assist you. Our service today is broadcast live. We're continuing to record remotely to observe the precautions and help to continue to flatten the curve from the COVID-19 virus. We're acknowledging our bishop and the cabinet's urging to do no harm and to not physically gather at the church, but continue to worship online. Please remember to watch for any additional information and updates in our monthly Herald. We'd like to acknowledge our mission spotlight as the AIDS Resource Council. This wonderful organization serves those who are affected by the HIV AIDS epidemic. Additional information can be located on our website. Won't you please give that we might support ministry and sharing the gospel here, there, and everywhere? Also on our website, you can give a special gift, an offering, or tithe by clicking the giving button and selecting Push Pay for credit cards or Roam First Access to use your ACH debit card. If you find you have compromised immunity and are not able to get out to pick up supplies, run errands, or get groceries, please don't risk it. We have a group of volunteers right here at the church that will be more than willing to help you run your errands, pick up your groceries, and drop them at your door. Just call the church office for more information. Since we will be posting worship services online for the foreseeable future, and even after we're able to gather together again, if you have a Google account and would like to be notified about videos that we post to this YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button and the bell icon to choose how you would like to be notified. Also, please remember to invite your friends to subscribe too. So once again, don't forget to check the weekly emails and the monthly Herald for updates and additional information. Now sit back and enjoy our online worship service until we gather again real soon. Now we're at the time in our service where we would walk around, see our friends, and extend our hands to our neighbors, our newcomers, and visitors with the sign of peace. Not everyone has the opportunity to view our online service. Would you take a moment to think about someone that you've missed and you haven't seen since we've gathered together? Send them a card, a letter, make a phone call, send them a text message just to let them know that we're thinking about them 
and that we miss them in our service. If you're watching through Facebook or YouTube Live, place a comment, extending a sign of peace to your friends and our visitors in the comment sections below. Until we're able to gather again, may the peace of our Lord and Savior always be with you. Amen. Now please join with me in reading the call to worship in unison. In the midst of a world where people hunger and thirst, come worship a God who feeds the hungry. In the midst of a world where people are abused and oppressed, come worship a God who calls for compassion and justice. In the midst of a world filled with wars and rumor of war, come worship a God who desires nothing less than peace for the world. In the midst of a world where love is not freely shown and forgiveness is hard to find, come worship a God whose grace and love know no end. Now, as we affirm our faith, let us recite the Apostles' Creed found in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Shall be world without 
People that walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. For a child has been born un unto us, a son is given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We light the candle, candle of, of joy. joy. Would you join me in a time of prayer and an attitude of seeking God's peace? Let's pray. O oh Lord, our God, how awesome and majestic is your name in all creation. Amid all of the hustle and the bustle and the noise of life, we seek your peace, O oh Lord, the peace which Christ himself promised would be ours, a peace which passes all understanding. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, that Jesus was born to be the Prince of Peace. And may our lives reflect the peace of Christ which we seek and of which we speak. Oh Lord, we, we know that Peace is not merely the absence of war or of conflict, but peace, true peace, is being right with you and with the whole of creation. We earnestly seek, O oh Lord, to live in that peace and we strive for that peace to fill our world. Make us instruments of your peace, O Lord, where there is discord or misunderstanding, where there is hatred or strife. Use us, O Lord, to bring reconciliation, to offer the promise of your peace, and to help all creation be reconciled, and made new. We come, O oh Lord, amidst the waiting in this Advent season and for the season of the COVID pandemic to come to a close. O oh Lord, we know that over these past many months, much has changed. But the one thing that has not changed and will not ever change is your love for us and your invitation for all of creation to be made new and to find peace in you. We remember, O oh Lord, those whose hearts are broken because they have lost loved ones in this past year. We remember, O oh oh Lord, those whose hearts are broken because the things that they had grown accustomed to have been forever changed. Amidst all the change, and the stuff of life, O oh Lord. We are comforted by the promise 
of your peace. Fill us, O Lord, with your peace that we might share that assurance with all the world. Hear the prayers of our hearts, O Lord, for we make them known to you. As together we lift our voices in one accord and we pray the prayer that Jesus himself prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Little people, it's the third Sunday in Advent, our season of waiting, anticipating, and preparing for the light that is most definitely coming for the world. Do you know how we know that? It's because we've been told, promised even, by a prophet or two. Now, prophets are messengers from God, sent to deliver news that God means for us to hear. Uh, they also tend to have cool names. I mean, take a look at this lineup. And do you remember Ezekiel? He's the friend we hung out with for summer during VBS. Uh, he's not really doing anything here during Advent. Just wanted you to see he's still here. And then, of course, there's Isaiah, our friend who 700 years before Jesus is born, speaks the message of the light of the little child that will lead them, of the peaceable kingdom. Such good and juicy Adventy stuff. Which brings us here to this guy, the last prophet in the Bible, the one who comes right before Jesus. You know him, you love him. It's our friend, John the Baptist. And this is what they said about him. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the true light, which enlightens everyone and was coming into the world. John the Baptist made such a splash. People came to see him and asked him, like, who are you? Are you the one we've been waiting for? Are you the light, the Messiah? Because you sound an awful lot like that. Or maybe you're a prophet, Elijah, someone like that. John the Baptist says, nope, that's not me. And then using the words of Isaiah, how cool is that? He says this, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. The message of the prophets, of God's promises kept to us, of God's presence with us, of the light that is coming for us, during Advent, we keep all this in our hearts as we wait, so that when the light comes, it shines not only in us, but through us and reaches everywhere. Through Amid all the stuff of life, we still come together by way of the wonder of technology, television, video recordings, Zoom, YouTube. But here we are. And we make an offering of ourself and of our substance. On Christmas Eve, I hope you'll come and see the beauty of the sanctuary Nan Henson and her team have done a wonderful job decorating and filling this place with the warmth of the season. Please read more about your opportunity to come on Christmas Eve and participate in candlelight and communion in a different way, but a way to celebrate together with your family. So we come and make an offering, an offering of ourself and of our substance. If we were gathered in this space, the ushers would prepare to distribute the offering plates and you'd make your offering, you'd give your gifts. 
and we'd hear beautiful music played. Well, in just a moment, you're going to hear beautiful music played. But I want you to think about, and as I've said earlier in the service, as I stand here in the sanctuary preparing this video, up above on the roof, the roofers are busy putting on a new roof. The sounds that are above me and the sounds that are outside, it seems like there's another crew working in the, in the yard, another in the parking lot, and someone across the street. So it's a cacophony of sound. But yet, we have come to find peace. As we make our offering, we offer ourselves and our substance to bring peace, the peace of Christ, into the world. You're invited to share the love, the peace of Christ from right where you are. Let's pray. O oh Lord, receive our offering, and may the offering of our life be acceptable to you. Fill our lives not with fear and trepidation, not with anxiety and unknowing, but with the promise of peace. The peace, O oh Lord, that Jesus himself promised, that peace which passes all understanding. And may our lives reflect the peace, the power, provision, and presence that you have promised. Accept, O oh Lord, these our gifts, for we offer them in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. And as we give, we give with thankful hearts. Glory to God for God's great love. Amen. you to read out loud and in unison from right where you are our scripture lesson for this the third Sunday in Advent. We find it in Isaiah the ninth chapter and the sixth verse. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Unwrapping Christmas. Jesus was born to be the Prince of Peace. You may notice uh, it looks a little different. I'm coming to you today standing in a different place, offering a different perspective. If you were at the organ console, this is the sight you would see Sunday in and Sunday out. I stand here to demonstrate that changing perspective can change many things. In our scripture lesson, the prophet Isaiah spoke about the one who would be born to be the Savior of all the world, the Messiah, Christ the King. When Isaiah spoke those words to the first hearers, the first hearers had a very different expectation about the Messiah. 
what the Messiah would do, the changes the Messiah would bring about, the hopes they had for the deliverer, the one who would save them. Now thinking all these years later, after Isaiah spoke the words and after the birth of Christ, when the prophecy was fulfilled. Until today, when we hear them once again on this third Sunday of Advent, we've seen the candle of joy being lit. And as we watched that flame leap into light. I ask you, amidst all of the stuff of life that's gone on in this year, all of the new reality because of the COVID pandemic, sure, things have changed. And perhaps some things will never, ever go back to the way they were. But here is one thing that has not changed and will never change. The promise of peace. If, we, if our perspective defines peace as the absence of war or conflict, then we are going to be disappointed because there will be conflict amidst humanity. And our scripture even tells us that there will always be wars and rumors of wars. So how can it be that Jesus says in the gospel of John that he promises to give us peace, a peace that passes understanding, a peace that is beyond our ability to comprehend because the world can't understand it, but the peace that's promised is the peace that Isaiah spoke of, the one that the Prince of Peace will usher in. As we prepare to move towards the celebration of remembering Christ's birth on this Christmas, in this time of Advent, in this time of waiting, we lit the candle of joy. I invite you in the waiting to find reasons to rejoice and to make your prayers of thankfulness for the joy that is ours here and now. And to hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. He will be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Friends, that's the Jesus who has promised the power of God through the Holy Spirit, the presence of God through the Spirit with us, even today in the midst of all of the stuff of life. the presence, the power, and the peace are all God's promise. Maybe you've heard this or read it before, and I'm going to spell the words out so that we are clear. To K-N-O-W... Jesus is to K-N-O-W, peace. N-O, Jesus, and N-O, peace. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. The prophet Isaiah spoke the words clearly for the world to hear. The Messiah, the one who would be the deliverer, 
was going to change the perspective of the whole world and shift it away from focusing on discord, strife, hatred, and enmity, and division, and move it to worship one true God for the Prince of Peace came to proclaim that news. And that, my friends, is the good news that we proclaim today. As we unwrap Christmas, we proclaim that Jesus was born to be the Prince of Peace. And as followers of Jesus, we are sent into the world to share the peace, to be instruments of God's peace. Now, what does that look like? Let me close with this. Look around. Listen, look for opportunities to be an instrument of peace. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to jump right in and uh, settle some long-standing argument. It may simply mean that you listen when someone is speaking. And they may not be seeking a solution to the grievance that they've aired. They may simply want to know that someone hears, is listening, and cares. What if you and I, members of the body of Christ here at Rome First, what if we were instruments of God's peace in small ways, right where we are? we might be surprised to see a change in perspective and see things differently because the world would see the peace of God in us. I pray that we might be the church. Would you pray with me? Oh, gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the wonder of your love, and in and amidst the stuff of life, in these difficult and challenging times, in these difficult and challenging days, amidst all the noise and the strife and the difficulty and the disagreement, O oh Lord, help us not to listen and tune in to all of the things that are negative and that would draw us apart and keep us from you but help us to attune our hearts to hear your truth, the truth that you love us, the truth that Jesus, the Christ, came to proclaim. And make us instruments of your peace, O Lord, as we unwrap the gift of Christmas and proclaim to all the world that Jesus was born to be the Prince of Peace. This is our prayer, and we make it in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. So we are called to be instruments of peace, to change our perspective and to look at the world from a different viewpoint, to see things in a different way, and to understand that not everyone will understand the way we understand and to be okay with that. As you go into the world, I invite you to find ways to share the peace of Christ from right where you are, out into the world, this day and every day. And I bid you peace. Amen. Unwrapping Christmas. Jesus was born to be the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. What does that mean to you? The prophet Isaiah foretold the Prince of Peace. The promise of God's peace was a comfort for the first hearers. That same promise is available to you even today. How will you seek God's peace today? The good news is Jesus is the Prince of Peace. From where you sit or stand, do you see evidence of God's peace? 
Have you considered you might have to change your perspective to see God's peace? Now hear the good news. Jesus was born to be the Prince of Peace. Jesus fulfills and embodies the promise of God's peace. Unwrap the Christmas gift of God's peace through the Prince of Peace and share it with folks all around. Next week, Unwrapping Christmas, Jesus was born to be our Savior from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now may we look for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and our Savior Christ Jesus this day and all days. Amen. perspective again, this time from the piano side of the sanctuary. It really does matter where you sit as to how you see the world. The prophet Isaiah proclaims, tells to all the world that the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, is coming. Jesus was born, a promise fulfilled. Today, as we wait for Christmas 2020, amid all of the stuff of life, 
we're invited not to be distracted by the stuff of life, but to know Jesus and to know the peace that Jesus came to give. As you go into the world, as we go into the world together, let's be instruments of God's peace right across the street, in our homes, in our neighborhood, in our state, in our nation, and yes, even in God's great whole earth that we might be instruments of God's peace from right where we sit. You're invited to join Jesus in this journey of peace. Unwrap Christmas, for Jesus was born to be the Prince of Peace. And we celebrate the good news of that peace in our lives and its possibility in our world. Now go, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and be an instrument of God's peace from right where you are and know that God's love is with you. I bid you peace. Amen.